you guys. So I've been doing a little research today on what is an oxalate. And so today I just wanted to tell you what I learned. Um, this is something that is new to me, and so I've just been sort of uh, doing a little digging to find out what it's all about. Um, my name is Sarah, and I'm glad you are here with me. And I like to help women, especially, um, to be able to recover to... Um, I just lost my thoughts here. I'm sorry, I got distracted. Um, to really be able to regain their mental wellness through um, through nutrition, through biblical encouragement, through learning some of these different ins and outs of the body, and through proper supplementation. So that is what I do. That's why I'm here. And so I wanted to tell you about oxalates. Do you know what an oxalate is? I have a friend who keeps talking to me about oxalates because she knows that I'm into gut health and all of the things with proper eating and all that stuff. And so she's like, oh, yeah, I have to eat this low oxalate diet. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so if you know what that is, tell me uh, that you know what that is um, and maybe tell us what you think it is in the comments. Um, so I decided I better look it up because she keeps talking to me like I know what I'm talking about and I don't. So here we go. So I looked it up, and apparently there's this thing called low histamine, uh, and you have a histamine reaction to food. And um, if you're dealing with that, um, they tell you to avoid foods like that that are, that are histamine, and there's like a huge long list, and it causes all these kind of issues. But when you um, don't seem to have any response to that, you may have an oxalate issue. So an oxalate naturally occurs in our bodies and in plants. And so their main job in our system is to gather up all the excess, um, what do you call it? My brain is calcium, that's the word. The excess calcium in the foods that we eat and that are wander around in our body and move them out. Um, but what happens is when our guts, which I was like, of course, why didn't I not know? Um, when our guts get out of balance from stress, you know, by the way, I just want to address that for a second because a lot of people listen to people talking about gut health and they're like, well, I don't have a gut health issue because I eat well. But gut health can come from, or gut health issues can come from being stressed all the time, having like a high stress life. And, and I don't mean stress like you're frantic all the time, but if you're just like always on, so that can affect it. Also, um, yeast overgrowth, antibiotics, things like that can affect the balance in the gut. And so when your gut is out of whack, your body cannot take those oxalates. Those oxalates can't be used in the way that they need to be to get that excess calcium out. And then that will like um, plant itself all over your body and cause things like kidney stones, chronic pain, inflammation, fibromyalgia, headaches and migraines, allergies, candida, insomnia, digestive issues. I mean, it's a lot. It can really wreak havoc on your body. And so here we are thinking that we're eating all the right things because we're eating all the vegetables. Like here are some oxalate foods, ready? Um, oh, wrong list, here we go. Berries, kiwis, figs, purple grapes, potatoes, rhubarbs, okra, beets, spinach, leeks, celery, plantain, sweet potatoes, olives, peanuts. I mean, there's a list, there's a huge list here of things that we eat regularly because we're like, these are really good for you. And they are. <laughs> until they're not. And um, that happens when they're out of balance. And a lot of that comes from having a leaky gut issue that unfortunately a huge portion of the population has and doesn't even know it. And so when you're getting brain fog or when you're getting insomnia and you're not sleeping well or um, when you have like achy joints and things and headaches, um, maybe you just don't go to the bathroom enough. Um, you should be going at least once a day, probably more like two, sometimes three. So when you're having all of these issues, you're like, oh, I'm just having this little issue, but they're all interconnected. And one of the reasons is because of these things called oxalates. And so I thought that was very fascinating. Um, and to think you're eating all of these really good things. I mean, there's berries are supposed to be one of the best because they're easy to process on your body normally and they don't raise your blood sugar, but they cause an issue when you come to histamine and oxalate. And so the answer is to uh, not to just give them up forever because that's just a band-aid, right? 
we want to get to the root of the problem with all of these chronic things that we deal with. We want to get to the root of the problem and make some progress. I know for me, that was my biggest frustration when I wasn't feeling well is nobody wanted to get to the root of the problem. Everybody just wanted to give me pills and band-aids. Um, <clears throat> I want to get to the root because I want to get better. I don't want to just be on your pill forever, you know? Um, I don't want to be in your office every five months because I'm so sick or whatever. So anyway, so how do you fix an oxalate issue, a histamine issue? Um, there's some other ones that I, I don't even know how to say it. There's a Sally Salic. I don't know, salicylates, something like that. Um, all of these issues in your system, how do you fix it? Well, if it is a gut issue that's causing all of these other issues that you didn't know were connected to your gut, you start in the gut. So um, there's lots of really good ways to work on the gut, but when you're having this kind of a flare-up, you have to really be smart about the vegetables you're using because you need them because the fiber feeds the good bacteria. So you don't want to just not eat them, but you have to be smart about which ones you're eating um, so that your body can sort of settle down and not have as many oxalates to deal with. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so you want to work on that root cause, get in there and deal with that, pay attention to what you're eating, and there are really some really great resources out there for how to, you know, what the right way to eat for, for something like this, for an oxalate issue or a histamine issue, but it's not forever, which is really encouraging because you can eat that way and lower the, the uh, load on your body to work hard. It can lower that down and your body can start to heal and refunction. Um, you can start getting some better sleep. And then also supplementation makes a big difference because, to be honest, we don't get really good quality nutrients from our foods for the most part these days. And I buy, I, I'm, I spend the money on getting organic and grass-fed, and but still it's just not enough on um, with the depletion of all of our nutrients in our food sources. So um, supplementation is huge. It's a big deal. And so, um, yeah, so if you've, been struggling with things like fibromyalgia, kidney stone, regular kidney stones. I had a friend who got them like three or four times in a row. Um, chronic pain, inflammation, headaches, allergies, candida, which is a yeast overgrowth if you don't know about that, insomnia, any other digestive issues. The list is really long. There's lots of things. If you've been struggling with any of those things and you just think, oh, I have this issue or I have that issue or I have these two issues and you don't realize they're connected, let's talk about it. Um, let's look at it together and see if there could be some sort of underlying cause. I'm not a doctor, but I like to find the, the nitty gritty. And I know that the supplements that I take and the supplements that I, um, that I sell are really getting into the gut and rebalancing it. And um, I can't make any health claims. That's not what I'm here for. But I'm here to offer you a chance to evaluate it and see if it's something that you might want to give a try because um, we don't actually have to live like this. We don't actually have to live in these chronic states. We can get to the root because now we're starting to know what the root is. We didn't know what the root was before. And so we as in science, not we as in me, because <laughs> I'm just learning all of this. But um, So I just found this super fascinating. And so if you want to talk more about how to um, work on your gut health so you can deal with things like this inflammation and the allergies and things like that. Let's talk about it. Um, I will tell you what we have to offer and how it might help you. And um, yeah, so shoot me a message or put something in the comments, more information in the comments, and I will get in touch with you. Um, it's a it's a no risk guarantee, 12 month money back guarantee. So um, if you want to check it out and just evaluate and give it a try. Um, there, you know, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. But I think it will because uh, everybody, I just see so many great results. So anyway, that's the story on oxalates. Um, I was really intrigued by it because I'm going to make for dinner this week um, a Mexican stew that is oxalate free. And I didn't understand what that meant. So here we are. And I probably will talk to you a little bit about that recipe when I make it um, to show you how easy it is. And um, give you another recipe in your toolbox. So anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Let me know if you want any more information on oxalates, whatever I can I can send you a, a really good article on it, um, or any more information on supplementation 
and what we have to offer over here. So, all right, take care. Bye.